This hard drive right here tells an incredible story. It tells my story. It tells the story of how I became an architect, what I did to become an architect, and the terrible renders, terrible sketches, and terrible quality of work I thought was good as a university student. What all of those things have in common was the use of Enscape. Now, as we all know, Enscape is an incredible rendering software. And recently, Enscape 4.0 came out, making it available to everybody on Windows and on Mac. Today, I wanted to share with you my story, my rendering story in particular, how I went from a university student to a full-time architect. The story is long and treacherous. It's not something that occurred overnight. In fact, it's been well over a decade since this story started. And much like most of you who are most likely going through a similar journey, it does take time. It is ruling, it is hard work. You will not get sleep for many, many nights, but I can guarantee you it is all worth it in the end. My story began at Curtin University here in Western Australia. It is one of the most prestigious architecture universities in the country, and it does have an excellent reputation and program. However, what my first day looked like wasn't exactly what I would have expected. I have told this story on this channel before because it is so different and an incredible icebreaker. Day one at university for me wasn't your typical architectural drawings, sketches, technical details, any of that. It was 300 students piled into multiple rooms for life drawings. And if you don't know what life drawings are, they're basically naked models come in and you just have to sketch them. Now, as an 18 year old, this was a very strange concept for me. And it was not something I would have expected day one of architecture school, but it did break the ice. It pushed us all out of our comfort zone. The first software I picked up was AutoCAD and then eventually ArchiCAD and Revit and Rhino. But at the same time, I was always drawn to Enscape because it was the most user-friendly 3D software that I could quickly and easily develop any render from any software. From basic diagrammatic models and sculptures, all the way through to my thesis project, which focused on construction innovations in architecture, moving into the new world. Some of my first renders were absolutely disgusting. That is not something I would ever present ever again, but it was the starting point for me. It was where I learned how to use Enscape. It was where I learned how to apply textures and materials, and then how to apply photorealistic camera angles, and then slowly into video. One of my first projects in university with Enscape was a bathhouse a very simple spa-like experience that I just genuinely had no idea what was going on. However, the renders really articulated my points, my vision, even as a very inexperienced student. The ability to be able to use something like Enscape and produce renders of this caliber in such a short period of time was pivotal at that early time for me in my career. Jumping ahead a couple years later, Enscape was at the forefront once again when the projects became a little bit more realistic. A museum located on the edge of a lake. Now this was more of a major works project that took significantly longer to design, develop and create, but it was something that allowed me to explore all sorts of different rendering softwares, all sorts of different architectural programs from ArcCAD to Revit, and it really defined my pathway moving forward. This museum project was relatively simple. It was a box, if I'm being honest, but it was a time for me to be able to really break down each program and understand its capabilities and how they worked for me. For this project in particular, it defined the road. It selected ArchiCAD for me as a career preference and it selected Enscape for me as a rendering preference. This led me to the next project, which was a major hotel development and design. In this scenario, it was multiple major projects, multiple buildings, which meant a group project and every single one of my peers in this group who are still some of my best friends today have used Enscape in this project. We all collectively decided to use Enscape because it was by far one of the easiest softwares that was able to produce some of the best results. Now, at this time, we were all on Windows. We were university students and it made things very, very simple. There was only one of us on Mac at that time and unfortunately, he was not able to use Enscape, so I was the one doing the renders for him. This didn't bother me whatsoever because at the end of the day, all of these renders look cohesive and coherent. It was something that was, regardless of the architect, regardless of the designer, the quality of the end product was identical. During this time, Enscape was still finding his feet. It was a very, very new software and it was relatively young in the rendering space. At that time, all Enscape could really do was generate incredibly photorealistic photos but there wasn't too many additional extras you could plug in. 
People were missing, furniture was missing, soft and hard landscaping was missing. But what was available was all of the materials and palettes. So we were able to create a cohesive set of architectural buildings that uniquely represented our vision. At that time, most of the vegetation, most of the people, most of the vehicles, they were all added in Photoshop. But it wasn't long after until I progressed into my masters and into my thesis that Enscape continued to evolve. It now became a one-stop shop, something that had people, it had trees, it had cars and vegetation. It had everything you needed to create a holistic scene without having to go back into Photoshop. Now remember, these renders were all back in the day before ray tracing was available to the masses. It was still very, very low key, real-time photorealistic rendering software. It has improved so much more since this time, and it is why I continue to use Enscape today. Now, before we dive into what today looks like, the last iteration of Enscape at my university life was my thesis project. It was a project called Launch Day 2035, and it focused around architecture and space exploration. Now, every render in this project was created using Enscape, from sections to elevations to 3D axonometrics and internal perspectives. Every single thing inside of this thesis project was completed with Enscape, which set me up for my first job in the real world. Because as we all know, when you come out as a fresh graduate, the first thing any employer looks at is your portfolio. So if you have good quality documentation, good quality construction detailing, and excellent renders, you're in the running straight away. Now in 2024, I've come a long way. I still have a long way to go as an architect. It's a lifelong career. It's a lifelong journey. But to date, I'm still using Enscape to produce some of my own personal renders and professional renders. What I've learned across all of these years is that clients in particular don't often understand architectural plans. To no fault of their own, of course, because we look at these plans all day, every day. Our clients come in and read them for the very first time they're not sure what is going on. So by being able to provide incredible photorealistic renders without spending weeks or months developing them ensures that the client architect relationship is always strengthened thanks to Enscape. If you're new here, you probably haven't realized that there is a Discord group down below in the description. In the Discord chat, there is thousands of architects, students, and practitioners from all over the world. There is one subcategory in particular that I'm genuinely proud of. It's called RenderShare. In RenderShare, people from all over the world are sharing their end products and asking for direct feedback, for criticism, because that is what makes us all better. Criticism directly influences how we design and how we improve. So by having a tight-knit community that is genuinely not going to rip apart your project for fun, they're only gonna tell you things that improve your work, improve your renders. Has seen so many people who have been able to produce lackluster renders now producing incredible photorealistic renders. Some have even started rendering careers out of this. So the power of renders and the power of Enscape in practice is invaluable. And as we look forward into the future, you'll slowly start to see more and more Enscape renders coming from me personally on personal projects. It is something that I'm passionate about. It is something that I wish to guide and train the rest of you on and help you develop further in your careers. So together with Enscape, we are going to be able to produce some amazing stuff. First of all, like I mentioned at the start, Enscape just updated to 4.0, which means everybody on any device can use all of the features of Enscape 4.0. For me personally, who was converted to Mac a long time ago, it means I'm not limited by the previous software limitations of Enscape. I now have the full library accessibilities to all of their assets, all of their parts, from photos to videos to shops and everything in between. It genuinely now makes Enscape available to everybody, including students, architects, and even homeowners, or those looking to just create a few simple renders and generate some ideas for themselves in their own personal projects. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.